don't know that she did anything special. Is very, very plain. I think it was a complete miss. <laughs> For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Before we get started, I just want to announce that I've got merch. That is right, you can get your own Neon Noir merch right in the link below. Now back to the episode. Today we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 11, and let you know whose looks are fab and fabulous and drab and awful. But don't forget to wait all the way to the end where we let you know who had the best and worst looks of the week. This week's runway theme is Flashback DragCon 1980s, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a 1980s drag look. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Plain Jane. And Plain Jane is coming in in this uh, patterned, power suit, giving you full 1980s a businesswoman. She's paired it with this black hair with this one pink streak. Now, the first thing we will say, I love that Plain Jane is switching it up. She's definitely giving you a different silhouette than she would normally give, and she is doing it in a very polished way. What I also love is that she is giving you 80s, but she's not giving it to you in a 80s prom dress or wedding dress type vibe, she is definitely going in a different direction, which I love because I don't know what it is about drag queens on Drag Race, but a lot of them love to channel this like really horrible dresses of the 80s. To me, even though I get that they're supposed to be referential and funny, they're always just bad. So I love that she decided to take 80s, but still make it glamorous and you know what I mean? She is definitely giving you her plain Jane aesthetic. I love this black wig with the one uh, neon piece of hair in it. I think it's super cool. It's definitely giving you the height that it's needed for this. Even though she is wearing a suit that can read masculine at times, she decided that she's gonna up the feminine energy by showing a lot of cleavage and also giving you her signature hourglass shape. She's also got little frills around her waist that also make it feel a little bit more 80s but also a little bit more feminine all in all i think this is a pretty good job and that is why for miss plain jane i'm gonna go ahead and give her a bow next up is q and q is coming out in this dress with this keith herring inspired print on it she's got the red collar around her neck that pops up and has black hair hold up Yes, you did hear me right. Q is wearing hair. Oh my God. Personally, I will say that I love that Q is wearing hair. It's giving you that height that I've been saying for weeks that she definitely needed. On top of it, she decided to go with a tall hair. So it does allow the dress and the collar to have its moment. Uh, she didn't decide to go with big poofy hair and that's long um, so that the garment can shine. The hair is definitely giving you that 80s businesswoman, which I kind of love and kind of hate. It's a little bit masculine and a little bit feminine. Um, it's definitely giving you those Karen vibes, but like the 1980s Karen. All in all, I'm just shocked that she's wearing hair in the first place. But now let's get into the outfit. She decided that she was going to go with this Keith Haring inspired print. Now, I love Keith Haring. He's one of my favorite artists. And I'm glad that uh, he is referenced on this runway. Keith Haring was a very big advocate within the AIDS uh, community and was very vocal about it. And Q says that this dress is an homage to the AIDS pandemic of the 80s, where she is wearing Keith Haring and around the collar makes the red ribbon that is now known for AIDS. Now, I love that she went here. I think that this is so great when a drag queen can put a message in it, whether you get it or don't get it, it's lovely that it's there. So you can explain it or not explain it and just wear it as a really fabulous outfit. She goes on to say that the reason why she's wearing this outfit uh, is because she herself is HIV positive. So therefore, this is sort of her coming out in the world 
and uh, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous story. And we need more people speaking about what's going on in the community and, you know, telling the message that you can be living with. It's not a death sentence anymore and you can live your full life. So uh, we need people to be strong enough to tell their stories. And now enough about the sentimental, let's get into the garment. The garment, uh, like I said, I love Keith Haring. Um, I just wish that she would have done a black and white Keith Haring inspired look or even a red and white uh, Keith inspired look. I don't like the gray that colors in the characters. I find that it kind of dulls down the outfit. I think it just needed that little bit of contrast and that little bit of pop uh, into it. And I think that would have worked with just uh, one color and white. So red and white or black and white, you know? I love the red collar, and but I didn't necessarily associate it with the AIDS ribbon. And that's because it still looks like a collar and I, I would have liked that to be more of a moment. For example, when she turns around, she turns around and she's just got a bow on her butt. I wish that that would have also been a ribbon. And then I think that would have been a little bit more obvious than just this collar. This collar is very well made, very well thought through, but maybe a little bit too conceptual because um, it just feels like a collar. And only when you say it, do you're like, oh, I get it. You know what I mean? All in all, this is reading 80s. It's giving me a message. Uh, it's got a little bit of Keith Haring in it. So what's not to love? And that is why she is getting a bow. <laughs> Next up, it's Dawn. And Dawn is coming out wearing this black face skinny with a pink mohawk, uh, some sort of chaps and a blue bodysuit. She said that she is giving you 80s punk rocker bitch. And I'm like, work. This shouldn't work. This feels like everything goes into it. To me, this is the epitome of drag. This is a whole bunch of shit that just really shouldn't work together. But in my opinion, totally does. Maybe my opinion is a little bit twisted, but I love it. I find that this is so over the top, so camp, so weird, so interesting. And I love it. It's just... It's a strange and I love strange drag. I love when people are pushing the boundaries. Now, a lot of people will say that this isn't fashion and this, that, whatever, but this fits Dawn's aesthetic perfectly. It definitely got a character. Some people say, is it giving 80s really? And I'm like, you know what? It's giving me a little bit of that twisted sister's fantasy, which I love and I totally got it as 80s. And since this is my show, my opinion is the only one that bad. All in all, I think this is great. Uh, I think it's original and I love it. And that is why she is getting a bow. <laughs> Next up is Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage is coming out in this teal bodysuit with a teal dress, teal gloves, and big black hair. First off, the hair, mama. She said, you want 80s? I am giving you the biggest 80s hair in existence. I love this hair. It's a moment. It's giving you the drama that we need. Then we go down to her bodysuit. I love this color on her. I think that this is a very interesting color, not one that we usually see very often. And it really glistens against her skin. I love this dress that she has behind her. Um, it's definitely giving you movement and flow. But that's where the stuff that I like kind of ends. I find that the bodysuit itself is way too plain. It is just a piece of fabric. And I'm thinking to myself, where are the cutouts? Where are the different mixes of material? Where are the rhinestones? What are you doing to this bodysuit to make it extra? I feel like everybody's got a plain bodysuit. So what are you doing to make it a drag race worthy bodysuit? And I don't know that she did anything special. Yes, she added a couple of uh, roses on her shoulders and yes she added the skirt but the bodysuit which is the main part of it is very very plain on top of it she decided not to put a corset on which i think was a complete miss personally if you're gonna go so plain that everything else needs to be perfect and creating that hourglass shape like plain jane does for example it would have really brought it up a level but right now and because she's not wearing a corset she's feeling a little bit more square and a little bit more masculine now let me just say that i am very much okay with people not wearing corsets if you have the body pull it off or if you want to have this like runway heroin chic look pull it off I think it really depends on the look so um, like some people wear breasts uh, some people wear corsets and I think you just have to play with it depending on the look that you're doing I feel this look a hundred percent needed a very cinched waist uh, and that's 
And, and that's all I'm trying to say. Now, we also have to talk about the shoe. She decided to go with a regular shoe. And again, to me, that's a little bit of a miss because you just see like this much skin at the bottom. I wish she would have just done a whole piece all together so that it would have looked a little bit longer and it wouldn't have cut her off at the ankle. All in all, it's an okay outfit, but because we are on drag race and we are this far into the season, we really need a lot more. And that is why for my aim on the page, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Safira Cristal. And Safira Cristal is coming in in this black dress with these giant white buttons, this giant white collar and giant hair. She said, you want 1980s? I am gonna give you 1980s. First things first, she is definitely following the theme. Um, I think she is one of the queens that really leaned into this 1980s aesthetic and decided to make it her own. The one thing that I like love about drag is drag is a, a, a lot of times about uh, exaggerating certain things. And Safira Cristal definitely did this with her dress. She said she took this uh, maybe traditional power suit vibe, but decided to make giant buttons, giant neck piece, giant hair to really make it over the top and make it drag. Um, it's exaggerating proportions in just the right ways. On top of it, she looks beautiful. She put looks very well put together and the silhouette is immaculate. Now, I will say that this silhouette really threw me off because this is not the Safira I'm got to know. Uh, this definitely feels different and to me a little bit too different than what she normally does. I wish she would have brought a little bit more of her own personality into it. You know, Safira Cristal is a little bit more theatrical, opera, and blue. Had this been blue, I think it actually would have worked better. I know, I cannot believe I'm saying that Safira Cristal needs to do another blue look. I think it would have worked, honestly. Um, all in all, it's a great outfit. To be honest, it is not my favorite. I can appreciate it for the work that goes into it. I can appreciate it for uh, the, the following of the theme, but overall, it's not my personal favorite. Uh, but that being said, I'm still gonna go ahead and give her a bow. Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion, and Morphine Love Dion is coming out in this two-piece iridescent pink suit with a little bit of rhinestones and crystals around the edge and this big blonde hair. She goes on to say that this is not the hair she originally intended to have for this outfit. The hair she brought for this outfit broke in transition and therefore she had to borrow this off of another queen. And I will say, I think you kind of see it. The outfit itself is very plain. So when you are doing a plain outfit like this, your hair must be exquisite. It must be over the top. And I think that this hair is a little too plain to go with this plain outfit. Um, I personally would have went with a bigger hair, maybe a little bit of crimping in it, maybe a little touch of uh, color in it as well to give you more of that 80s vibe. The suit is reading a little bit 80s, but not enough. So all the accessories really need to help tell that story. The suit itself is fine. I feel like it's missing something, but I cannot tell you what that something is. It's just like not hitting the way I would want it to hit. All in all, I don't really have a lot of things to say about this outfit because it is kind of like meh. And because it is meh, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Nymphia Wind. Nymphia Wind is coming out in this purple dress with red hair and metal cone bra and metal woo-ha. She said that she is giving you Grace Jones in the movie Vamp, and I love it. Now, this is how you do a theme because uh, first off, you definitely see the drawings on her that are a little bit Keith Haring as well. I love this purple color. I love this red hair. I love the contrast behind it. It definitely feels like what if somebody from the 80s did the future, um, which I also think is an original take. But more importantly than all, I love that this feels fashion, fresh, and new, even though it is referential to the 80s. Y'all, Nymphia Wind knows how to do drag. Every week she turns it up, even the weeks that I don't even get in, I can appreciate the craftsmanship, and the craftsmanship on this are yet again immaculate. I love this look. All in all, I love this color combination. I love her thinking behind it. And I love this look. I literally have nothing to say because it is perfection. And that is why she is gonna get a buzz. 
And that's it for this week's runway. I found that this was a really interesting theme and what I really appreciate is that all the queens went in a different direction. We definitely had some fabs and we definitely had some drabs. Speaking of fabs and drabs, let's find out who had my fab and drab of the week. So my drab of the week this week goes to... Oh. Morphine Love Dion. I love Morphine in general, but this outfit just wasn't hitting. It was a little bit too plain and just wasn't enough. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Y'all, this shouldn't have been a shocker. To me, this was a landslide victory by Nymphia Wind. She really hit a home run while other people just got to first base. She did excellent and I love the look from head to toe. And that is it for this week's episode. Y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.